because so it comes up on the page on your browser, you print it, you snip it out, and you carry it in your wallet. When you activate the the grid, then any authentication is challenged by after you give them your username and password, they challenge you by saying, tell us the characters at B4, C9, um, you know, Z7 and, and Q2. <laughs> and so you, you, you got to get out your grid and like playing Battleship, you type in the character at each of those coordinates. That's cool. In order to say this is really me, because we, as we know, that's this is another factor of authentication. Now it's something I have in addition to something I know. I know my pat, my last ma- my last pass password. Now uh, it's also something that I have. Is that kind in of addition- how perfect, perfect paste paper passwords is almost like? No. Well, perfect. The one it's not thing a that perfect. The one thing that perfect paper passwords does is it never reuses. Any of the strings. It's the one-time thing, yeah. Yes, it's one time. Now, the grid could potentially, I mean, in, in your farthest worry would be that something is watching you log on using the grid and is learning your grid. So the only thing I would, and I don't know, I have meant to ask, but I forgot to ask, if they have any, like, you you need to update your grid, they absolutely allow you to kill your grid and make a new one. So, for example, if you left, if you lost it, or if you left it somewhere, you want to kill that one and make yourself a new one, which would be completely re-randomized and brand new, and the other one would die and no longer be useful. Um, oh, and that's true of bookmarklets, by the way. Also, you're able to deliberately kill any bookmarklets that you might have left on a different browser somewhere, mm-hmm. or you might have temporarily installed somewhere. If you change your last pass password, that happens anyway because I've done that. Yes, and none of my none of my bookmarklets work anymore. Yes, if you change your last pass password, then and you can tell you, I really learned this thing. I, <laughs> you, yeah, because I mean, I've been using this for a year, and you found stuff I hadn't even discovered yet. So yeah. So if you change your your last pass password, that obsoletes your bookmarks. But you can also explicitly do that just for security purposes. Although you will then have to recreate them manually, but that's easy because you're just able to drag and drop them from your from uh, from the page onto. The you know the the um, the shortcuts bar, so you can. So I would say if you're a grid user and you're a heavy grid user, just obsolete the grid yourself. I don't know whether the, the, these guys do or not. Obsolete the grid yourself. You know every few months, so that I mean it's very far fetched that anything is memorizing your grid behind your back. But that's the only possible problem that I could see where perfect paper passwords is a little bit better. <laughs> um, so the other thing they support is a very cool software one-time password generator. Oh, and you can even you can even make one-time passwords. That is, using their web interface, you're able to say, generate for me some one-time passwords. And you can click on it a few times. I, I made up 10, and they're long mothers. They're, they're like, whoa, okay, I'm going to you know, print this out or, or write this down very carefully. And you can use those if you know in advance that you're going to be somewhere where you want to make sure no one can ever log in again. And so, so they, they just like emit some, you know, every time you ask for one, they'll generate another one. And you could you could print them out and carry them with you, and then they'll just like you know cross them off as you use them. So and they're good until you kill them, and you're able to kill them at any time, or you use them exactly one time. So they have a built-in one-time password generating facility there. They also have sort of the equivalent of a software YubiKey. They do support our very favorite. Stina Evansfard Yubico's YubiKey, and so and and I, I tried it out. Works great. In fa- you just go there um, in in their uh, configuration dialog on their website. They have got a tab, a YubiKey tab. You you go there. It's got room for I think maybe eight or maybe maybe ten different YubiKeys, so you're not just stuck with just one. Well, that's good because I worry about losing any kind of a dongle. Right. And so you're able, so, so what I did was I just, I plugged it in, set the cursor there, 
touched the YubiKey. It saw the, it's it got my YubiKey string, and that's all I had to give it. Because because remember the YubiKey has an ID as part of it, and then the one-time password portion. And so you look up the YubiKey. They checked with Yubico Central and said, "Yep, we know about that YubiKey, and uh, and now we're ready to go." So you're able to have multiple YubiKeys. And so what that would do is that's used anytime you need to authenticate with LastPass, and you can choose the security level that like in in, in with, with multiple checkboxes of like I only want to I only I want to be able to generate passwords with LastPass. That is, have LastPass do all of its things and only authenticate once. I want to re- require authentication every time. I want to authenticate after so many minutes, you know. So there's various ways you 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 configure lockouts and the need to reauthenticate. They do have one of their premium features, which is the one dollar a month thing that Leo was talking about. They have something called Sesame, which you know, as in open Sesame, is kind of cute. It's an app again cross platform, Windows, Mac, and Linux, which is it's just like a software one-time password. So it does the same thing that the cool little YubiKey oh, does. That's what I want. We, yes. Because then I can't lose it. Then exactly. Yeah. You're, exactly. It, so so you download it from them. You stick it on your, your the the USB. Any USB key. Any USB, as many as you want. I like you that. Need to, you need to authenticate to it. But when you do, it'll automatically log you in on your it'll launch your browser log you in and authenticate you all in one all in one process <laughs> I'm, dead. I'm getting it right now it is very cool <laughs> um and they do have a a, a an, um a support for ie anywhere which is the sort of the 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 mobile uh uh transportable version of ie uh which is useful because of course ie is pretty much everywhere and the last thing is import. They do allow you to import from pretty much everything I've ever seen. And I'm going to run through it just once. So if you're currently somewhere else and I've sold you as I have sold myself on on this thing being like the answer, you can import from Firefox's password manager. I had been using Firefox's password manager. Instantly, LastPass knew about... Everything that Firefox knew, which was extremely cool for me. Also, from one password from Clippers, from something called Darn Passwords, from eWallet, from Fireform, from HP Password Safe, from KeyPass, obviously from LastPass. It's able to import its own file, by the way. From MSI Password Keeper, from My Password Safe, from PassPack. From password agent, password corral, password dragon, password keeper, password safe, passwords max. From pins, password manager. From RoboForm, from Splash ID, from Sticky Password, from Skip, from S X I P P E R zipper, I guess. From Turbo Passwords and from a generic CSV file. So pretty much everybody there is. You can you can instantly suck your database in using their import feature of the plugin and you're moved over to them. 